General Bipin Rawat, Chairman CUSC and Chief of Army Staff, Shri Baba Kalyani, the Chairman of uh, Kalyani Group, Generals Khandari uh, and General Maravne, Mr. Nitin Gokhale, who is the Founder and Editor-in-Chief of uh, the Bharat Shakti, Distinguished Dignitaries, Conclave Speakers, Invitees, Delegates, Defense Attaches, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning. First of all, let me thank you for the invite. Uh, we have a very special audience here. Uh, the defense attaches and very renowned people in the field of media, tech servicemen. And uh, it's a great honor for me to get this chance to speak on a very relevant topic, which is enhancing defense capability through cooperation. For us, uh, we are normally called white uniform and very blue uniform today. Uh, that the sea-going forces, the cooperation is a very, very vital uh, word. You all know cooperation is very important, but for us in the, at sea, there are certain elements that make cooperation very important. First is the seas, that is the nature of the seas. The seas are open by nature. You all must have heard, and they are also called the global commons. You must have heard of uh, Hugo Grotius who propounded this idea of uh, mayor liberum, which is the freedom of the seas for humanity. And uh, wherein he stressed that the seas are open and they should be interconnected. Seas do not divide, they connect. And uh, they are known, therefore, as the highways of prosperity. We are all reaping the benefits of this rule-based order and open seas and the very interconnection that the seas offers, which permit unhindered and unfettered trade and commerce. Therefore, navies by their very nature are operating in an open and in an open and cooperative domain. The second reason why cooperation is important is the very expanse of the seas. You are all aware that uh, two thirds of the Earth's surface is a sea. And it is huge. When you go out to sea, you realize how vast and uh, huge the seas are. And if you see the Indian Ocean region countries, for example, if you take Maldives, Maldives has an exclusive economic zone which is thousand times its land mass. Similarly, Seychelles, a small island nation, has an exclusive economic zone which is as big as India's. So this is the size, the expanse of the seas that are given to countries. And when you see all this, the realization dawns on you that you can't do it alone. And therefore, again, recognition comes that cooperation is there and then it becomes a part of naval DNA. The third issue that I want to uh, stress about the oceans is the nature of the threats and challenges that we are facing on the ocean. We have piracy, it's a common threat, but the threat has transnational and regional connections because even their targets that they seek to uh, attack have, say, a flag of one nation built in another nation, crew, crewed by various other people and carrying a cargo of, which is destined to various other countries. So therefore, and you see drug, drug trafficking, which is related to narco-terrorism, human trafficking, uh, illegal, unreported, unregulated uh, fishing, all these have transnational, international, interregional character. So that again brings us to the fact that naval cooperation is basically par for the course. Having spoken about cooperation, I would just like to say that the Indian Navy is fully, fully seized of this role, its role in uh, maritime cooperation. In fact, amongst the four tasks that, uh, or uh, the stated tasks that we have, that is the military, constabulary, benign, and the, the, the fourth one is the, uh, the diplomatic role. And that deals totally with uh, the maritime cooperation. And when we follow this uh, maritime cooperation uh, roadmap, we are following what the government of India's policy is. And I think there is no better way to enunciate the government of India, India's policy for maritime cooperation than the acronym which are very eloquent, 
Prime Minister has given, which is Sagar. Sagar means the seas and the oceans, but it's an acronym for security and growth for all in the region. I'll, I'll just quote the Prime Minister. He said, we, I, and I quote, we strive to unite our region in partnership. So the aim, therefore, is not exclusion, but inclusion. And therefore, and the Navy, as, as our government, we aim to promote the seas as pathways of peace and prosperity. So co cooperation, therefore, is a big buzzword. How do we execute the Navy's uh, maritime cooperation? There are, there are about four methods by which we do that. One is through constructive engagements. Second is through collaborative efforts. Third, through capacity building. And fourth, through capa uh, capability enhancement. I'll just go to quickly run through these four uh, points. The constructive engagement, by constructive engagement, I'm talking about staff talks, high-level delegations, uh, wherein we get to know each other's mind, talk to each other, which are the common problems, how do we tackle them, do bilateral exercises, multilateral exercises. Some of our bilateral exercises, like Simbex, are 26 years old. They finished 26 years old. Last year we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the Singapore-India maritime bilateral exercises. Uh, we have uh, also ship visits, wherein we entire, in fact, we will take a ship across to another country. You are actually exposing the entire technological wealth and uh, the ability of your country when you take it there. The steel that is built with, the, the engines that are running it, the electric generation capacity, the, the sensors, the equipment, it talks about the strength of your uh, economy if you take an indigenous ship across to anything. So ship visit is another constructive engagement. We have exercise Samban where nearly 19 officers from 10 countries have uh, the de defense attaches have been taken to sea to show uh, what the Navy's, uh, Indian Navy's, uh, uh, to contextualize uh, the Indian Navy's uh, way of operation. We now have a million 2020 in uh, March, wherein we have invited 41 countries. So all this helps in better uh, understanding of each other. The second point is collaborative efforts. In collaborative efforts, you must have, you know about the Gulf of Aden anti-piracy operations that are going on since 2008, where a multitude of navies are involved to tackle a common challenge. We have the IONS, we have CORPACs, the coordinated patrols, which we are doing with Bangladesh, Myanmar, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. Basically coordinated patrols to address common challenges. And of course, uh, things like Western Pacific Naval Symposium, Goa, Maritime Conclave, etc. When I refer to capacity building, the problem is you might have small countries with very large challenges and sometimes you don't have the wherewithal to tackle them. That is where sometimes you have to share infrastructure, equipment, platforms with each other. We, for instance, we have, we have been helping out the smaller nations, Indian Ocean, Indian nations and our neighborhood. Similarly, we are taking help. For example, we operate the fast interceptor crafts from uh, Sri Lanka. And the last is the capability enhancement, wherein, when we, wherein you focus on giving skills to other countries, exchanging skills, best, best practices between countries, and uh, so that you have a, uh, a common sort of uh, capability or capability. And uh, here I think the training is the most important thing, because not, training not only teaches us about one another, it also builds bonds of friendships. So we, the, in the Indian Navy, and as, as the other armed forces are putting a lot of effort in uh, training people from abroad and uh, training abroad ourselves. So if I were to encapsulate uh, these maritime uh, cooperation initiatives, uh, they stand on certain basic principles, at least the Indian Navy stands on basis, uh, basic principles. The first one is our focus is on helping build self-sufficiency and confidence amongst partners. Our aim is to support partners in enhancing their maritime security, whether it's through capacity building or uh, capability enhancement or collaboration. The second uh, uh, pillar or principle that it rests on is respect for national and international law. We have to respect the sovereignty of nations. We have to adhere to international law and the UNCLOS. For example, when countries signed up for the UNCLOS, which was a, really a, a great achievement, in 1982, 
they also signed up to be uh, subject to the PCA or the Permanent Court of Ar uh, Arbitration. And you, as you've seen, there are some countries who aren't doing that. Whereas, if you see in our case, we had a problem with Bangladesh, we resolved it mutually and through the PCA judgment and we respected that. We also, the third pillar is that we want to learn from each other. There is something called the collective military competency. This is what the Indian Navy and India believes in. It's not necessary that one nation has all the, all the capacity or competency. We have to learn from each other. We have to learn from the best practices, SOPs, exercise together, work together. These are the ways ahead. We've got Bangladesh and Indonesia who know a lot about HADR, for instance. Singapore, sorry, uh, uh, Sri Lanka just tackled, successfully tackled terrorism. We have Seychelles and Mauritius who are making a lot of efforts towards marine ecology and conservation. Myanmar, for, who is also a good example of indigenous shipbuilding and construction. And the various large navies that operate in this area which have their own competencies. So when we, we look at collective military competence. And the last pillar is to strengthen cooperative mechanisms. We have bilats, trilats, multilateral formats. These are welcome mechanisms to strengthen engagements. We have forums such as WPNS, IONS, IORA, which help build consensus and understanding. And then we have smaller working groups, expert groups, which, uh, which enable us to focus on specific issues. And the Goa Maritime Country, which we just finished, is one example of that. So finally, to sum up, I'd like to say that I am, the Indian Navy, is committed to enhancing cooperation and engagement with like-minded navies in the Indian Ocean region. And our engagement is again guided by five S's. Sierra's S's, which are articulated by our Honorable Prime Minister. The first S is Samman, which means respect. Samvad, which means dialogue. Sahiyo, which is cooperation. Shanti, which is peace and samriddhi, which is prosperity. So thank you for giving me the time. I wish the conclave the very best. Jai.